Welcome to Behind the Visors. This weekend we're at Brands Hatch for the penultimate round of the season. I can't believe we're nearly finished. Mate, it's been a long year with you. <laughs> anyway, more importantly, we've got some great news this weekend as we welcome on board a latest sponsor, Alamogato Watches. So check out the video later on for the little photo shoot we did. But anyway, before then, we're going to do a quick lap at Brands Hatch. How to kill Ben? This is probably you most famous corner in the country, would you say? Yeah, we're approaching this about 140. Oh, easy, yeah. People yeah. don't realise just how how steep this corner is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like the England's version of uh, Old Rouge, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. And you want to carry that momentum there, don't you? Oh, it's, yeah, really important. You get on the power early, carry the speed up here, because it's, you know, such a steep hill into Graham Hill Bend. I hope you can't see my ball patch the back there. <laughs> Dive it in here. Drift about a car width from the, the curb, rotate it, and get back, get back in the power. This is also a great spectator point. All the years when I've come here as a spectator before I started racing to watch, we always stand here. Yeah. And the view, like Brands actually is famous for it, but the viewing you get for a spectator is just yeah. it's like no other, really. You can see. You, you can't beat it, you know, on a sunny day, ice cream, kids yeah, are rolling it's around. It's, a great, it's, it's a probably great one of the best. Place best tracks in the country I, I think, think it's my favourite track I forgot how good it was yeah until I came here this weekend and uh... it's one of them tracks when the car's good you love it yeah when yeah. the car's crap you hate it yeah yeah it's really crucial to get a good setup good exit here it's very deceiving it kind of wants to draw you into an early apex but you really need to apex a long way around the corner there's a bit of camber on the way in so you want to be tempted to turn in early but don't apex early yeah. it's on whoa it's on <laughs> Head down, ready to go, ready to go, head Come down. Come on. Come on, send it. Straight over. Woo! There we go. It's gonna be a photo finish. Photo finish, have we got it? Got him! Have we got it? Have we got it? Oh, do this, come on! Bit more. No, oh. They must have been cheating. They must have been cheating. Make it look really natural. Hello. Well, that's, oh, that's a nice watch, isn't it? What time is it? Four o'clock. An hour to qualifying. So as you can see there, Plow is looking, uh, looking pretty down, which is a shame because I think that's the best qualifying he's done all year. You know, uh, he put in an absolute blister in lap time. And uh, we both, you know, I think we're first in class and P3 overall, so that is today our, our best qualifying. But Plow is worried that he might have come into the pits a little bit too hot, a little bit too fast. There's a, a pit speed limit of 40 kilometers an hour in the pit lane. And if you're one kilometer over, then it doesn't matter. You're uh, as a penalty, all your lap times are you know, are taken, which would mean us starting in the back of the grid. So uh, I don't think he will be over the, the limit, but he's just a little bit worried that he might have come in a little bit too fast. And yeah, so now it's a waiting game. So fingers crossed he didn't, and uh, we can hopefully celebrate what, what was a, a fantastic qualifying session. So fingers crossed. Um, right after qualifying had finished, coming into the pit lane, I thought I'd messed up. I thought I was caught speeding in the pit lane, and that's not a good thing because they would wipe the whole session off you and in that moment my heart sank thinking i'd really screwed up messed up the whole weekend but luckily i didn't so yeah huge sigh of relief we're going to start p3 tomorrow best qualifying of the year it is you put in a belt of a lap so we're going to bring a trophy home another podium some more champagne hopefully fingers crossed yeah i mean it's a good start you know we're starting where we want to be starting so come on through it 
Time for bed. <laughs> Time for bed, yes. I'm knackered. Calvin's at the wheel, he'll be taking the start of the race, just heading now down to the grid, make, check him out, make sure his head's in the game, focused on what he needs to do today. Let's do what we've got to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, let's enjoy it, yeah? Exactly, mate. Just yeah. have fun. As long as we give our best, that's all that matters. And again, Calvin Fletcher finds himself surrounded by silver-graded drivers. Remember, he is a bronze-graded AM. He's leading the AM class at the moment in the championship is Calvin Fletcher uh, with his co-driver Martin Plowman by half a point, which seems to be the standard really this year. Now we see the attack from Calvin Fletcher, and that is for class position. Pro-AM Fletcher has now taken the lead of that class. Oh, oh wow, big off that's from Glengetty. That is a huge off. That's going to be a safety car. Oh, oh, that's hard from that angle. It looks like Glynn thinks he's clear yeah. of the car, and we see the impact. Yeah, I mean, that car is destroyed. He did well to avoid that. Yeah. Woo. So there's been a couple of really big accidents in the first part of this race and uh, Calvin did very well to avoid one of them. Um, but the safety car now, which neutralizes the race, and the whole pack has to pack up behind the safety car. He kind of undoes all the work that he's done so far, but now he's got another half an hour to get his head down. Hopefully give me a bit of a lead. I'm getting in the car around about the hour and two mark, so another 30, 34 minutes. So it's time to get ready now. It's time. It's time. Oh, what time is it? Oh, it's time to race. first in that's the first time I think all year safety car has been uh, been out and it's been out twice so far so uh, for me the start there I think I was too cautious way too cautious um, naturally I think the championship is in the back of my mind now coming into the penultimate round and turn one I think I got passed by about four or five people I had a slight coming together with somebody and I lost my, my drive wing mirror it doesn't sound a lot but it then meant the rest of the you know the rest of my stint I had to be really really cautious and uh, it's not a great position to be in but you know I got my head down and managed to, to gain a few places back and pushed on and so I was pleased I came home in P1, which is the main thing, and the great lead that I had managed to build up, we came in, pit stop was absolutely perfect, and then as soon as Powie got in, got on the road, another safety car, which means that the gap that I, the advantage that we pulled out from our competitors, once the safety car comes out, everybody's there and the race is nullified, if you like, and the, the pace, everybody bunches up and comes back down. So whatever advantage you've managed to gain in my stint is, is back to zero. So now the fight, the fight is on, there's probably 25, 35 minutes left and everybody's bunched up so I think uh, P2 and P3 are only just behind us so Powie's got a, well, a tough job in his hand but you know I'm confident in him so fingers crossed. What's going on lads? It's just over time at the moment. Yes. Yeah. The battle that is for position here, then, by the looks of it, involves the 95 Aston Martin, uh, which, sorry, 75 Aston Martin, which is 50 GT4, and then the 43 BMW, the um, Aston Martin 11 of uh, Martin Plowman, excuse me, 
uh, and also the TF Sport 97 car as well, which we mentioned the Tom Canning. So they're all fighting for position in amongst cars that are not fighting for position with them. But I think they're starting now slowly to get themselves uh, separated from the, uh, the lap traffic. More than, it's starting to look like a round of British Rallycross Championship, this, isn't it? I think that if the number 11 car, Martin Plowman, wins Pro-Am, that will hand the championship to them because they were half a point clear. They win their class and both don't finish or don't score, which looks like it might be the case. Looks as though Kelvin Fletcher and Martin Plowman might wrap up the Pro-Am title in GT4 with a race to spare. The leader who had a 30 second lead over everybody else uh, has apparently just put it in the wall at turn two. So, you know, you just got to be concentrating the full time. You know, cost them a race lead and then potentially a race win. So. Yeah, a lot of uh, misfortune for that team, unfortunately. But, oh, it's all about us. Beep. <laughs> So Plowman leads in Pro-Am, second place is Michael Broadhurst in the number 77 Mercedes, the Fox Motorsport Mercedes, and third in GT4 Pro-Am is the number 20 car of uh, Michael O'Brien. Right, this is the GT4 Pro-Am leader, and this, I think, might be enough for Martin Plowman and Kelvin Fletcher to wrap up the GT4 Pro-Am Championship. They were half a point clear of Michael O'Brien and Graham Johnson coming into this race, who have not finished. Plowman is going to come through and score 37 and a half points. He'll be 38 ahead, which means that provisionally, they are the champions in GT4 Pro-Am. I reckon they've done enough to take the Pro-Am Championship, but it is all provisional because, of course, there are still uh, things that could change, but uh, certainly it looks good for them. So depending on what the result is after this round, we're going into Donington, the final round, with a healthy, healthy lead. And it pretty much means that the other guys have got to win for us not to win the championship. So, so as it stands for. at the minute, we're... Uh, can't celebrate yet. Can't celebrate just yet. We're just nearly there. But like, we're leading the Pro-Am, and hopefully we can do the job at Donington. So all in all, a fantastic weekend. See you at the next one.